morning is found in Luke 24, beginning at verse 13, and ending at verse 20. And the reason is following. The word of the Lord is found in Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 13 and ending at verse 20. I'm reading the revised standard here, making it a little different. The word of the Lord. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what is this conversation you are holding with each other as you name? And they stood still looking sad. Then one of them named Cleophas answered them, Are you only a visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What thing? And they said to him, uh, I want you to know something. Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty indeed, and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day uh, since this has happened. Let me see. Amen. I want to preach this morning on closed eyes. <laughs> closed Ah, Close. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this wonderful opportunity that you extended to us to come and share with your people the Word of God. Thank you, my Father, for the Holy Spirit who anoints the Word and anoints us for preaching and brings to our minds and to our hearts those precious truths that illuminate our minds and hearts and open our, help to our eyes to see what lies ahead. Bless us together, Lord, as we meditate on your word and think about it. And then as we act upon it, Lord, continue to strengthen us. As we ask you all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. It was the first day of the week. And the women had prepared themselves prior to this to anoint Jesus. But the shadow came, and they waited until that day and came to the temple, to the tomb, where Jesus had been placed. When they got there to the tomb with all the spices where they had brought with them to anoint Jesus' body, they found the stone had been rolled away. Uh -huh. And they went up to the tomb and looked in. Now, in 1970, my wife and I, along with uh, 35 other people, went to the uh, temple around the world. Uh, we did nine countries in 33 days. And when we got to Greece, uh, there was a tour leader by the name of Alexandria, a fine young lady, and she said this, which I've never forgotten. The stone was not rolled away from the tomb to let Jesus out, but it was rolled away to let us in to see that he was gone. Amen. Amen. And I've never forgotten. So they came and they saw that the stone was rolled away. And that Jesus was not in the tomb, but had gone. And the two angels sat there and said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? Right. Do you remember how he said uh, way back in Galilee, how he must be put in the hands of evil men, be crucified, uh, be killed, and then be put in a, a tomb? And on the third day, ride your memories. Uh -huh. He told you that before you left. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so he, so he said, uh, go and tell the disciples. And so the women went back to the place where the disciples were. And they expressed to the disciples the joy. They expressed to the disciples the inner experience they had. They told the disciples what had happened to them when they saw the empty tomb and heard the angels talking about what had happened to Jesus.
But it's strange. It's strange, I tell you, that the disciples did not believe them. And the text says that they believed the, the word seemed to them as idle tales. And they did not believe what the women had told them. Amen? Amen. And so it is that a whole lot of folks don't believe a lot of things about the gospel. Amen. A whole lot of folks today want to see things they can't see. Amen. But there was a man among these uh, men, these apostles, uh, two men, named, one named the man of Camillus, and I forget the other name, the other name that I mentioned. But they started to move away from where the other apostles were and move on back to a town called Emmaus. And they started walking. Emmaus was seven miles away. I imagine that from here to Middletown or one place like that. And they started walking. And as they start to walk, somebody joined them. As they walked the right way. They didn't know who it was and what walked with them. But uh, he said, to them, why are you looking so sad? What are you talking about, you two, with each other? You're walking on the way, he said, are you just a visitor here? I don't know what has happened in Jerusalem. And I want you to do one thing with me right now. Everybody close their eyes. Close them tight. Do you see anything? The answer is no. <coughs> now I want to say this is another thing to you. Have you ever walked down the street or been anywhere and looked at a person in that song? Don't yeah. tell me you have it, because I have it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yes. Have you ever been sitting in the classroom and teaching me, teaching, put on things on blackboard and you looking so far away, you don't see what she's putting in? Yeah. You know what's happened to you? Your mind has been preoccupied with something else that blocks out everything in front of you, throw your eyes open. But these <laughs> men, their eyes were closed that they did not recognize Jesus. Amen. We got a whole lot of folk. I don't recognize you in the church and outside the church. Yes, With eyes open. Yes. Wide open. Because yes. they only see their own agenda. Yes. They don't see the agenda of Jesus. Yes. They don't see the agenda of the church. Yes. They don't see the agenda of bringing people into church. Yes. Just their own agenda. Yes. Me, myself, and I. That's all they see. So it is. These two men kept on walking. Yes, they kept on walking and Jesus was walking with them. Uh, you're a stranger in this place and you don't know what it is that Jesus said, what things? How uh, I'm, I'm, I'm priests and all of them had taken Jesus, our Savior, and somehow had mistreated him, abused him, talked about him, and then hung him up on a cross, and then put him in a tomb. Uh, after that, of Joseph Arimathea. And then some women came back and told us that he got up from the dead. Yeah. And we don't believe that stuff, no! You don't believe that? So remember, the first point I want to make here is doubt and unbelief can close our eyes to truth. Yeah. And I got a simple answer for that. Amen. Take the top of your head off now and look on the inside and what's in there? You're going to tell me your brain, I'm saying no. There ain't no brain inside your head. There's meat inside your head. Take it off and look. And inside that meat is a brain. That's where it is, technically speaking. And I want to ask you, have you ever seen your heart? Yeah. Anybody in here ever seen your actual heart that you got inside you? Yeah. And somebody try to tell you you got no heart, you say you're lying. Yeah. Why? Because I can put my hands on my chest and feel the heart beating. How you know you see it? <laughs> no, I know it's there, but I'm, I, it's beating. Something's beating in here. I see a heart outside. So it is. You can doubt all you want, unbelieve all you want, but there's a reality to some things. Amen? Amen. These men's eyes are closed. They couldn't see Jesus who's walking with them. Right. And I say to every one of us, the only way you want to see Jesus is when you get in this place and worship every Lord's day, when you take some time every day and pray, we take some time and lift up the name of Jesus. We take some time and see him eye and lift it up. The only way you're going to see him is get close to him. Otherwise, doubt and unbelief. Cover your eyes. Tell you never see him. And it's sad to say in my 50 years of home ministry, I've been in the church. I see folk in the church a long time and bury him and they never see Jesus. Oh, they 
said, I'm walking with the Lord. Amen. But to, to, to prove it by their lives, it's far away. So they kept on walking, and Jesus started from the Old Testament and began to show these two men all the way about themselves. They had left Jerusalem because the movement was dead. Uh, Jesus was finished. The cause was all over. And the future was dark. There was nothing for them to say. So they had gone back. And Jesus began to show them how they must now begin to understand the scriptures. And so it is, as I mentioned that first point, about doubt and unbelief uh, to them. That somehow uh, their eyes were closed and they did not believe that Christ what he wants would be. Doubt and unbelief shut down all systems of our spiritual life. You cannot come to the scriptures and not believe what's there. Amen. Do you remember what uh, 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 Jesus said to Peter uh, after he had been up on the mountain praying for a little while? He said, to Peter, he said, have no fear, it is I. Peter said, if it's you, Lord, bring me to walk on the wall. And Jesus said, all oh, one word, come. Amen. Peter stepped out the boat and started to walk on the wall. He always kept his eyes on Jesus. Amen. Keep on walking. Keep on going amidst the circumstances of life. And I want to tell you one thing, the thing that gets us in trouble is when faith is in practice, we can do all things. Amen. When the mind moves, we take our eyes off the rise and focus on what's happening. Amen. Peter went down. He took his eyes off the rise and said, the only thing he said was, God, say it. Amen. And Jesus went down and plucked him right out the water and put him back on the boat. So it is. These two men were walking. There was a Christ walking right there. And that's the thing that bothers me. These men's eyes were closed. That because of doubt, the one in the grave, you come in with this stuff like he rolled through the tent. He got about the tomb until I told you after him. That's a lot of luck. I don't we don't believe that stuff. And hope I folks come in here. And I'll tell you one thing. Y'all know me over the years. I don't put nobody when they bring up in here in here. Is it because they're sinner? You going out of sin. I'm not putting nobody who dies out of Christ in heaven. Amen. Amen. You come in here in Christ. I can talk about the second coming. I can talk about hope. I can talk about joy.
second part is that they're coming to Amen. And back in those days, if you're not a chapter, and when you that come the game on us, what would happen? I would say to you, first of all, don't go, don't travel any further. Amen. Somebody might rob you or beat you up or see what you got. Come on upstairs and stay with us Amen. for the night. Yeah. And then tomorrow morning, yeah. make your step away again. Yeah. So they said that to Jesus. They say, strange, you're not in the strange. I'm looking at Sister Brown. And Sister Brown, come on upstairs. How can I say, come on, strange, come on. And you, Jesus. They ain't looking at it yet. Jesus went upstairs with him. And hallelujah. When you get along with Jesus, some things happen, isn't that right? Yeah. You ever had a little prayer time with him? Yeah. You ever had a little quiet time with Jesus? Yeah. You ever talk to Jesus more yeah. than by yourself a little while? Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. They come on in your soul. Yeah. Let you know everything is all right. Yeah. You tell him what a friend. What a
but I'm scared that they'll ruin it. I sat down with the Lord with them at the table. Amen. I don't know what happened uh, to Brad at the Lord's Supper when he introduced it, but Jesus must have broke that bread with the, with the disciple in an unusual way, because he took the bread and broke it. And me, the Bible said, they recognized him and their eyes were all oh, Listen to this. Amen. I said, now he went then to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread and blessed prayed and broke it and gave to them. And their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished out of his You see, when Christ reveals himself, Amen. doubt and unbelief go Amen. and truth and believe come on in. Amen. And you see him high and lifted up. He's a great God, isn't he? A great God, isn't he? Yes. A wonderful God, isn't he? Yes. And so they got up after they left there. They got up and they ran into Jerusalem. They ran back to the disciples. They ran back to the crowd where they had left, convinced that they had seen the Christ. And they, but the disciples said to Peter, "What in the world happened to you, brothers?" <laughs> he said, "We were walking down a fierce road, yeah. and a stranger joined us." Uh, we left here with doubt and unbelief. Right. We left here with a movement dead. We left here with no future ahead of us. We left here with nothing to look forward to. We left here with a sense of darkness and a shadow coming on, on our way. And so this stranger joined us. And he began to talk to us about the word. And you see, the word liberates. The word frees. And he said, our hearts burned with it. We didn't know why. But when we got to the upper room, uh, where we were going, this person took the bread and broke it. And you know what it was? It was Jesus. Our eyes opened. Faith took over. If you would, and sight became. You see, your eyes need to be open to God through His Word. And what the best thing that says to you bless your soul? Look for God's blessing in your life every day. Amen. Amen. Just keep your eyes open. Amen. And see God, what God is doing you. I mm. Even work. When I was in college in secondary, I had problems studying. You know what I do? Put my books down. Mm. See, Lord, I don't understand this. Amen. It's, it's, it's difficult for me, Lord. Amen. Yeah. And my way, read up. And the thing was open to me. Amen. No Amen. This is a reality in serving God. Yeah. The reality in trusting Christ. That in reality, he be a Christian. He opens your eyes. He opens your understanding. He opens you. Amen. That you see him high and lifted up. Yeah. They ran back. Because their eyes were open. Yeah. They ran back. Because they had seen the Christ. Have you seen Christ? Yeah. Were well, your eyes closed? Yeah. Yeah. Where are you walking to this morning? Yeah. He's a good God, I tell you. Yeah. Yeah. A mighty yeah. good God. Woke you up this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Hold in your right mind. Yeah. Yeah. You can look at your hand. Mm. Get them through. Yeah. 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 You can think this morning. Yeah. I got a woman sitting in the nursery who you know, can't use her mind anymore. Mm. Every Sunday I go over there, every week I go over there, I see other residents, men and women who lost their mind at our time has got them. And I come and leave there, I say, God, I thank you. Amen. Amen. I thank you. I have my mind. Amen. I may not be as sharp as I used to be, Amen. but I can think. My memory is all here. Amen. Lord, I want to thank you. Amen. Nobody has to put me in a wheelchair. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I can walk around yeah. on my own two feet. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Because you give me something to look forward to. Thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I don't care where you live. I don't care what kind of job you got or how much money you got in the bank. As long as you know you knew Jesus. As long as you've been born again. As long as you got a faith inside. It helps you to see God high and lift it up. You're my brother and you're my sister. And I thank you 
Thank you, Lord. I'm just blessing us to be together. We are the greatest force in the world. And I want to say this to the resurrection is the most powerful instrument in the world. Christ is alive. No other religion got that kind of thing but the Christian faith. We've got a living God. And uh, one of the writers said, I serve a little Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living whatever man may say. I hear his verse of mercy. I see his heart is here. And just the time I need him, he's always there.
shall be with you, you shall be down and under you. Yeah. But let faith and belief come, and your eyes will be open, yeah. and you will see the Christ. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. To hear the kids sing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? Yeah. To see them growing up yeah. and see them developing as Christian characters. Yeah. Isn't it wonderful? To see the Lord wrap himself around them yeah. and take them to school every day. Yeah. Yeah. Help them to see things yeah. around them. Yeah. Yeah. And they can see high and lifted up. Yeah. A church who loves them in the wonderful. Yeah. That somehow the Christ is wonderful. Yeah. I love him this morning. Yeah. Because he first loved me. Yeah. I love him this morning. Because yeah. he saved me a long time ago. Yeah. I love him this morning. But I can see him in all things that I try to do. And when I am doing the right thing, he points it out to me. He said, Matthew, stay away from that. Or Matthew, lead that alone. He said, Matthew, go in that direction. And I'm thanking him that as I walk down through the streets of life, I don't need to wonder of doubt and unbelief. That's gone. I just want him to show me the way. Acknowledge him in all thy ways. He will direct that path. Yeah. So I want to thank God this morning yeah. for being my friend. Yeah. Thank you this morning yeah. for being our Lord. Yeah. Thank you this morning yeah. for lifting us up. Yeah. Thank you this morning yeah. for being a good God. Yeah. Thank you this morning yeah. for putting food on our table. Yeah. Thank you this morning yeah. for giving us a ready cup of strength. Yeah. Thank you this morning yeah. for just being a God. Blessings we haven't even heard. Do you know that the blessing that for you that you don't even know coming and they're coming? Hey. You don't know that? Hey. Every one of us in here, God has some blessings for you. You don't even know about it. Yeah. That's a big blessing. Yeah. All our arms is unchanged. Yeah. Walk with Him. Uh. Talk with Him. Yeah. Believe Him. Read His Word. Trust Him. Yeah. And God will show you.
heart here. I'm so sorry. Uh, and you don't know Christ this morning. You're a person saved. You haven't been born again. And somehow the Lord spoke to you this morning. Your eyes are open. Where you see the risen Christ. You come this morning. Let me baptize. Don't be a professor of Come on this morning. Don't turn him away. You say, Lord, I'm coming right now. Just leave your seat. Hold it close and put your hand in his hand. Bring it on down here. Yes, is there one this morning? Yes, is there one this morning? The Holy Spirit speaks to you. Come on. Don't turn him away. We have no church home. We here in Massachusetts. We have a good hope. Come on, don't turn your back. God did too much for you. Brought you here this morning and brought you for a reason. That you may hear the word and know him and be liberated by the truth of the word. You step out with you where you are. Don't be what people are going to say. Just say, Lord, I'm coming right now. I'm coming just as I am. Without one thing. You hear this morning? Come on. Come on. Yes. Don't let your eyes be closed. Lord, I'm coming right now. I'm coming right now. He'll save you. He'll keep you. He'll strengthen you. He'll lead you. He'll give you a new life. Have no church on. You come this morning. Don't turn away this morning. Don't turn away. Amen. You'll be baptized. You'll be confessing your faith in Christ. You come this morning and say, Lord, I want to be baptized. I want to be see Christ, the preacher was talking about. I want to be like you. Oh yes. Come on this morning. We're here this morning. Don't turn away. Say, I'm coming, Lord. I'm coming. Yes. Give us some serious thought. Because your life just depends on your thinking and what you do for Christ right now. Let him come into your life. And come with you. Amen. Amen. Here this morning come. Amen. Thank you. 
you for the Thank, Thank you, Lord, for his decision to unite with Christ and accept yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And come into our church. We thank you, Lord, for the fellowship that he would enjoy here with us. We thank you, Lord, for the spirit. And our pastor, Lord, who will guide and direct him along with other officers and members into a deeper life in Christ. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to bless him and enrich his life. That he may feel his worthwhile serving, Lord. Yeah. Continue to bless our officers, Lord, and help us to be witnesses of the truth, liberating many women from ignorance and fear and sin. We ask you all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.